Okay everybody, guess what we've got today? Now you'll never guess this one. It's a Mark V Mondeo, two litre diesel, 160,000 miles on the clock. And every time the driver puts his foot down to accelerate, the car takes a dump and goes into limp home mode. So I'm going to plug our scanner in and see what we've got. Oh dear, injection pump, fuel meter in control A, fuel rail system pressure too low. Well you know what, based on the first two codes, the fuel meter in control and the fuel rail pressure's too low, I'm going to check the fuel filter first, if that's okay, then we're going to carry out a leak off test. So let's see shall we? I think we can safely say that fuel filter is not blocked. You know this filter's done 22,000 miles it's not great, but I've seen a heck of a lot worse. So that's our fuel filter eliminated. So I'll stick this new one in, and then we'll move on to the next step. Just as a note here, on these Mondeos, after you've replaced the fuel filter, you see at the bottom of the dash, there's a little spanner. That will probably stay on for a little while, because the actual sensor in the fuel rail will recognise the drop in fuel pressure. So if I leave this engine running, that spanner will shortly go out once the fuel pressure is back to normal. Okay, and that's now registering everything's okay. You'll notice there's a checking procedure here from connecting the scanner, reading the ECU codes, low fuel pressure in the fuel rail, so obviously the first thing is to check your fuel filter. That solves a lot of problems in a lot of cases. Obviously in this case it's not the fuel filter. So our next logical step is to carry out a fuel injector leak off test. The thing to understand here, when these injectors start to leak off too much fuel back to the tank, the high pressure fuel pump, which is buried below this load, is delivering fuel into this fuel rail. The problem is the pump cannot maintain the pressure in this fuel rail. This sensor sends the signal back to the ECU that there's not enough pressure. That's what puts your car into reduced power mode, which is just a safety feature to potentially stop engine damage. Now it's gonna be really, really difficult for me to try and film how these injectors come out because there is so much crap in there I can't get the camera in there to film it. But what I'll do is I'll show you the result of the leak off test and I'll show you what to watch out for especially when it comes to the leak off pipes in these injectors. So I'll just plug my test bottle pipe into our leak off pipe hole in our injector. Okay so we're just going to start the engine now. Straight away number one. See that? Number one. Pissing out. So you see that, injectors number one and number two were absolutely pissing down them pipes into them bottles. And when you look at injectors three and four, there's not nearly as much as what there is in one and two. The diesel should not be running into them bottles, it should be dripping into them bottles. So going by this, we're now going to replace diesel injectors number one and number two. Okay, the best way I can tell you how these injectors come out of the cylinder head is just to explain it on the bench. There'll be a 17 mil nut just here, which is your high pressure fuel pipe. That will undo and screw off. You have a clamp with a six mil hexagon key, which holds the injector bolted to the cylinder head. And you see that clamp will slot onto the injector and then the bolt will hold it to the cylinder head. Once you've removed the clamp from the cylinder head, you can just get a small pair of grips on the head of your injector and give it a twist like that. And then give it a pull as you're twisting it. And generally speaking, they come out quite easily. There's a plastic sleeve halfway down these injectors. You'll probably have to remove this sleeve and fit it onto the new injector. It just stops dirt and crap from falling down the injector hole. And don't forget, once you've removed your injector, make sure the copper washer is on the bottom of the injector. If it's not, and it's still down the hole, you're gonna have to remove it somehow. This little dowel I'm holding in this pair of grips sits in a recess in the cylinder head, and the clamp that holds your injector down sits on top of this little dowel. The thing to note here, if you blow an airline down where your injector sits to clear all the crap away, you could blow this dowel into the injector hole. It won't go through the hole into the cylinder, luckily, but it's just worth noting that this little dowel is there for a reason. I said I was gonna give a talk about these fuel injector leak off pipes. I find it necessary to talk about these because they're quite easy to break. And trust me, if you break these pipes, you're going to get rather annoyed. Okay, firstly, you see this little green tab? It's in the raised position. This is where it should be 
before you push it into the injector or remove it from the injector. What I'll do to start with, I'll pull this little blanking plug off, that'll expose our seal. So what you'll do is, you'll have your injector, you'll get your leak off pipe and that'll pop in the hole like that and you'll push it down until the little black ring is sitting at the base of the injector. You'll then push the green tab down. Once that green tab is down, that's it locked. The pipe can no longer come out and it is sealed. The problem arises when you try to remove these leak off pipes from the injectors when they're on the car. Typically, you would grab hold of these little tabs either side and lift the tab up by these little edge pieces. But this little edge is gonna snap off. And if you break this tab too badly, you will have to replace the whole leak off pipe assembly. So rather than try and lift this green tab up by the edges, you see this thick piece in the center. That that's quite strong. If you can get a little hooked pick in there, you can then lift it up like that. You can just lever it up and it's not going to break. Then you can get hold of both sides of this leak off pipe where it pushes into the injector and pull it out carefully. If you have to replace this leak off pipe assembly because you've broken the old one, the four pipes that go onto the injectors are easy enough to change. But the pipe that goes round to your high pressure fuel pump, I can tell you now, it's an awful lot of work to get to it. So the main thing I can really point out when you're replacing these leak off pipes is take your time. Because if you break them, it's gonna cause you a whole load of extra work. Okay, and before the new injectors arrive, I'm just gonna refit this dowel back in the recess in the cylinder head, ready for our clamp to sit back onto. There you go, one brand spanking new diesel fuel injector. So how much for two injectors? 496 pound. Oh my God, you could buy a PlayStation Pro for that and a few games. Oh, and by the way, you will have to bag up the old injectors, put them back in the box and send them back to Ford as there is a 60 pound surcharge on the old units. You don't have to do this, but there is a 20 digit code on the head of these injectors, which you will need to reprogram to the car. And using a scanner, you'll type in that code from them injectors. Oh, and just an important fact to know here when you're coding these injectors, cylinder number four is by the cam belt side, and cylinder number one is by the flywheel side. You know, I have to be honest with you, this is actually the first time I have ever reprogrammed. So, where, where was I? Ah, forget it. You know, if I was to go back 25 years to when the Mark I Mondeos were released. We were forever changing suspension components on them cars. They just didn't tend to last too long. They wore out rather fast. Yeah, I'd say from the Mark III Mondeo right up until the Mark V Mondeo, we don't seem to ever change much in the way of suspension components, especially on the Mark V. I've not yet changed anything suspension-wise. That just goes to show how much they've improved. Yet when I compare, the Mark IV Mondeo to the Mark V Mondeo, there's a heck of a lot more going wrong engine-wise with the Mark V than there is on the Mark IV. You see, that's baffling because the Mark V is the newer car and you would have thought technology these days, they would at least get it right. See, for instance, let's take these diesel fuel injectors. On a Mark IV Mondeo, two litre diesel, on average, on my findings, they would last in around about 200,000 miles. The Mark V Mondeos, sure, it's still early days, but on average, they're lasting 150,000 miles. So things are going a little bit backwards. And this is half the reason I'm being a bit hard on these Mark V Mondeos. They do seem to have a lot more problems when it's compared to the Mark IV Mondeos. But you know, actually, there's probably a much bigger picture here that I'm not really looking at. If you went out and bought a Mark V Mondeo, brand spanking new, and you done 10,000 miles a year, in 10 years time, that's 100,000 miles, and the car would be 10 years old. You'd have probably long got rid of that car by then, and it would have been nowhere near the point where it's gonna need injectors replacing. But on the other end of the scale, I'm dealing with taxes. They will rack up 150,000 miles plus in less than two to three years. So I can't be too hard or too biased here really, because seriously, if you are that person who does 10,000 miles a year, by the time you've got a 10 year old car, you're gonna practically have zero problems. But obviously for a lot of people who will buy these motor cars, once they've racked up 150,000 miles plus, you are going to be experiencing these problems. And that's where I bloody well come in, because I'll be letting you know about it. Anyway, whatever. 
that's it. I'm done. That's it for today. Till the next time. Adios.